baptism is. Baptism is done for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. Baptism is done to save us, 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.40, Mark 16.16. Baptism is done to wash away our sins, Acts 22.16. Baptism is done to be reborn to new life, John 3.5, Romans 6, 3 through 6. Baptism is done to clothe ourselves with Christ, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. I see the fire! I see the fire! I see the fire! You may be seated. This is God's dancing center. This is God's dancing center. Let's have church. Say, let's have church up there. Let's have church. Let's have church. Let's have church. You may be seated. I'm not worried, I'm used to this. I'm used to this. I'm used to this. Hallelujah. Hey, let's have church. Let's have church around here. Let's have church around here. Hallelujah. Hope it a God. Jesus, arise and walk. In the name of Jesus, arise and walk. The 
Aleluia! Everybody listen a minute. Sit down. I meant that kindly. The Holy Ghost, Brother Tenney, revealed to my heart and told me to involve in this conference the quartet that took the roof off. And I'm fixing to reveal that quartet. The first quartet member was worship. Worship. The next member was prayer. The quartet that raised the roof. The next member was faith. And the next member was last night, works. Prayer, worship, faith, and works will raise the roof. I feel like it's off tonight. I feel like it's off tonight. I feel like it's off tonight. My heart so to tie up. Please listen one more time. And the Holy Ghost said, And you are the fifth member. There shall be four before you that raises the roof. My son, I want you to reveal who is to be revealed that's in that house. I want you to reveal the healer. I want you to reveal the name. I want you to reveal Jesus. For I'm about to do a mighty work among my church. God spoke to my heart about three months ago. And he showed me that flame up there that was burning yesterday. He said, my son, I want you to take the garment of worship and a praise and a faith and of works. And I want you to cast ever demon spirit in that Jesus name fire. Everybody clap your hands to the Lord. excuses tonight I got a sermon if I'd preach it would last four hours hadn't even preached it to my church yet I'm just giving you parts of it 
And that same God told me, Brother Kraft, that there was a spirit. He showed me this in a vision that was attacked in all time religion. But I got news for you. If old time religion is dead, they sure didn't put much dirt on it. to come into the camp. Men have built toilets in the camp of Israel. When the command is toilets outside the camp. And the Holy Ghost told me if you want a real move of God Get the toilet back out of the camp. Get that spirit of lying. That spirit of jealousy. That spirit of strife. That spirit of envy. Cast it out of the camp. In fact, he said, son, pick up that garment. He took me back to my old home place and represented there was the sixth generation of Pentecost and in flew into that room right by the fireplace was an insect with wings and the spirit said grab a garment and knock it down. I knocked it to the floor. And to my surprise, the wing parts fell off. And there was a fish-like body, Brother Urshan, flopping. I said, oh God, what does this mean? He said, that is the spirit of Christendom. With Babylonian rhythm and sound. An Egyptian spirit trying to wade into the sanctuary with high squeals and loud noises. Cast it out! I stood for a while in silence. I wanted to put it in a garbage can. The Spirit said, be sure to get all the wing parts with that fish-like body and wrap it together. Don't miss one part of it. For the thing you spare kill you. I said, well, God, I'll just put it in the garbage can. The Holy Ghost said, no, no, my son. They're scavengers. That will reach in and drag it out and bring it in back to the old home place. I said, God, what is the old home place? He said, that's the book of Acts religion. That's the real old time kind. I was going to put it there. And the Spirit said, No, don't do that. Wrap that thing up and put it in a Jesus name fire. And that's what we're doing tonight. We're bringing that crippling condition on the four shoulders. Of the former ministries that have been preached here the four nights. 
We're bringing that crippling condition to Jesus and we're putting it in His name. And it's going to be all right. And it's going to be all right. <laughs> you do not have to undignify worship to worship. David was very dignified. When he danced before the ark. Now David, what did you think when you saw your wife up there that had her hair fixed like it was cut? You had your hair fixed like it was short. You made it appear evil. When the scripture says shun the very appearance of evil. Here are you talking about me shouting what you do with all that pancake mess on your face. You just came from a television shit. Oh, uh, set. Oh, lady. I just came from an earth shaking prayer meeting. The moment we substitute satellite revival for apostolic revival, we're ruined. I still believe in the prayer room. I still believe it takes the altar. I still believe it takes talking in tongues. I still believe it's essential to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The moment we substitute fleshly appeasements for spiritual endowments, we're going to either have to meet the problem now or we're going to meet it later. Hey, God. Hey, God. We created you. You came out of our midst. You came out of my church. But now, Hagar, it's time for you to submit yourself and return to the church. We created this charismatic worship in our churches. I even see people swaying like they sway. I've seen them try to sing like they sing. I'm calling back tonight the old quartet that raised the roof. The reason I use you, my son, to say these words is that you are young at heart as the children that worship God. But you're old and of age that you've got a good vision. And you know I've done the work. Say, try your new math all you want to. It won't work. They found out it won't. Go back to the basics. Try all this charismatic mess in your churches if you want to. I don't want it. Well, how 
how you're going to have revival. I don't know what to do with the people I got now. We're going to have to rebuild. Our church is full. Well, where are you going to get your finances to build? God's already given us around 350000 to do it with. We plan to pay cash for it. How do you do it? Because I believe in old time religion. I believe in worship. I believe in glorifying God. I believe in walking in the spirit. I believe in keeping the power of God. I believe in having the Holy Ghost. Hey, let me tell you something, charismatic spirits. Y'all have had y'all's day. The Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, The church is as Esther. This is her day. She don't need any extra makeup. She don't need fancy hairdos. That's what I'm trying to do. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, I'm sick of some of this mess. There's too much mess in the camp. God said, move it out. Because I'm not going to tiptoe around a bunch of piles. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the reason for it, God said, clean it out, get it out. Because I'm fixing to do a work among you. I'm going to drive at your enemies and I'm going to give you a mighty revival. <laughs> Please hear me. Wait a minute. Time for old time religion. Y'all please be seated. I know y'all tired, but I'm not. I want that bunch from Westlake to say hallelujah. That's my kids. They like Papa. And they like Papa preaching like this. Hey, Brother Kilgore, it was good for Paul and Silas. Hey, Brother Glass, and it's good enough for me. Makes me love everybody. We got a bunch of black folks in our church now. God saves them too. And they nearly preach me to death. You ain't doing nothing. <laughs> I had one of my black preachers come up to me after about a year in the church. He had one of these toothbrushes over his lip. And that night I started preaching. I said, I don't have one bit of the Bible for what I'm fixing to say. 
I told Brother Johnson uh, this morning, I said, I'm going to have to preach out of the Bible. Everybody's preaching my sermon. So I'm going out of it now. But I'm going to contend for the spirit of a truth. I said, now, I don't have any Bible for this. I don't even have any Bible to tell you how to fix your hair. But I want all of my men to shave their mustaches off. And that made it Bible. Say, we don't stop acts on nothing else, so I'm not going to stop it on that. And my black preacher came up to me, brother. He said, Brother Creel, for me to do what you said do, it's like cutting my right arm off. Because that's a custom among us black folks. But pastor, if you said do it, this is the last time you'll ever see it. I don't see much shouting up here, but it's a lot out here. Brother Lumpkin, I like you. Now, Sister Creel, you might as well shut up and don't tell me nothing at the church. I'm having a time. And not only that, I want you ladies to fix your hair. Right. Don't set something up here that looks like a bird nest. Am I preaching? Am I preaching? Am I preaching? Am I preaching? Thank you. Thank you. You know why I feel this way? I came out of Brother Robert Lafleur's church. He brought the message to Louisiana. He was the man that rode down the streets, Brother Glass, you know, in Fort Worth in a wagon, saying, Papagi, Papagi, for the kingdom of God has come. He's the man, drums aren't new. He had a big one, and he had a little one. But that's all he needed. I don't know what y'all do with all that mess. But he played it to keep time, not make racket. This is just a parable, Brother Glass. I was in a store the other day. And a group of Pentecostals came in there, and they were looking for earplugs. I thought they were going swimming. They said, no, we're on our way to church. Let me tell you, it's not in the racket. It's not in the sound. It's in the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.
They're making things so complicated. My fingers stumble going through the yellow pages. We don't need to complicate this. We need to simplify it. What do you mean, Brother Creel? My same old pastor, Brother Urshan, read in the Bible where it says, take a heart and dance. You remember that, don't you, Brother King? Brother Glass, you remember those days, don't you? He got his, went and got him a juice harp. I don't know when we're going to realize F-O-R is F-O-R and not because of. We, we really get on that F-O-R in baptism. But when it comes to joy, it's because I got joy, I'm going to leap. You stink. Far, far anywhere. It's far. You leap. Not because of joy, but you leap for it. Just like you're baptized for remission of sins. He got his juice harp. He got in front of that pulpit. Had a big crowd, Brother Johnson. You know I'm telling the truth. Yes, sir. Because you came out of that same school. Uh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, we started preaching together. I shouted one night and he shouted the next. I'm going to tell off on you. Go ahead. He said, Brother Creel... I wish I could turn loose like you do. I wish I could dance. And shout. I said, okay, come with me. I'm going to show you how. Hey, you got to know how to dance in the spirit. Don't look at me like that, man. You got to know how to play that piano. A lot of people say, you don't learn how to preach. You better learn how. Anything you do, Brother Crafts, you got to learn how. You got to learn how to pray people through. I've never seen anybody get a poor case of the Holy Ghost. Did they get a good case? I've never seen a bad one. Well, you rushing them through. Thank God they ain't there all year. Glory. And they started paying tithes. Oh, Hallelujah. Brother Johnson. Yes, then I got it, Brother Johnson, and I said, stand right over here. I said, here's how you learn how to dance before the Lord. You pick this foot up just about this much, and you put it down. Then you pick this one up, and you put it down, and you keep doing it a little bit faster. And the first thing you know, you're dancing. <laughs> Brother LaFleur said he got that heart and obeyed that scripture. And started dancing and the altars filled up. The Lord takes the foolish things to confound the wise. It's time for old time religion. We're too sophisticated men. We trying in our own strength. We're not sufficient. Now, I got something to tell you real important. God don't do anything for nothing. He started working a work in me. I went to Brother Barnes and had consultation with him. I believe in prophets of God. I believe in a five-fold ministry. And if you don't, you don't believe the Bible. So I called Brother Barnes and I went up there and talked with him. 
talked with me about an hour and a half. And he said, uh, let's go to the altar now. Then he started talking to me. He said, now, Brother Creel, I, had, I lost a third of my heart, dead, the whole artery, gone. Arteriogram showed I had 50% of another main artery closed, only one good artery. You know that's the truth. One good artery. Third of my heart completely dead. Brother Barnes said, uh, Brother Creel, here's how healing's going to come to you. It'll come in three stages. And he said, it'll be like Aaron's rod. It'll bud. It'll bloom. And then it'll produce almonds. I heard Brother Tenney preach a sermon one time. I believe it was him. I said, pray your prayer to fulfillment. That was the button of it. I had already been doing that. It started blooming when Brother Barnes laid his hands on me. The rod. In the camp meeting, Brother Tenney, you remember the night. Brother Beckton, you was there. Brother Kilgore, you was preaching it. On that night, the almonds began to come on. You remember when I stood? I said, it's happening now. The work of completion is beginning. And I did not know. But God said, I want to assure you of that, my son. He said, what month was it? I said, it's the seventh month. What day was it? He said, it's the seventh day. Seven is completion. He said, I give you double assurance. Then when I got back from Brother Johnson's preaching five or six nights here just a few weeks ago, the Holy Ghost said, I got something else to show you. It was in 1983. I just want you to add 1983. I said, okay, I'll do it, God. And it was 21. I said, I'll give you triple assurance. Then he told me, he says, look at the day you're preaching at the conference. That's the reason I wasn't afraid. It's on the seventh day of God, but the sixth. And I wondered why. God said, it's the tenth month, the sixth day of the year 84. Add that up. He said, it's 100. He said, nobody can do better than 100. It's complete. Let me tell you something, my friend, tonight. I couldn't be dancing over this audience in the shape I was in. The doctor told me, he said, you'll never go to the pulpit again, Brother Creel. But I went back to him, oh, about a year ago. He said, Brother Creel, I've changed my mind. And another reason why I know I'm right in preaching Book of Acts, Brother Urshan, because he told me, he says, now, Brother Creel, stay in Psalms. Don't get in Revelation. I said, doctor, what you're telling me is stay out of Acts. But I'm in Acts. I called Brother Barnes for an assurance I was fighting depression. If you ever had a heart attack, you'll have depression like you never had in your life. And it waded into that room. And I said, Sister Creel, it's time to call him. So I did. And I prayed. I said, God, let Brother Barnes be thinking about me when the phone rings. So help me God, Brother Johnson. Hallelujah. Brother Seaman called from Louisiana to see how I was doing. Uh, and my wife couldn't find the number for Brother Barnes. said, well, I'll give it to you. I got it. And by the time Sister Creel got a hold of Brother Barnes, the first ring, he answered it. And said, would you like to talk to Brother Creel? I said, I would. I've been trying to get him. I said, Brother Barnes, I prayed a prayer that you would have your mind on me when I called. He said, Brother Creel, I just heard your voice. We had a preacher's conference, Brother Tenney, you remember at the conference, and there was tongues and interpretation. 
And Brother Barnes was listening to the tape of my voice. He said, Brother Creel, I just heard you say, in the end time, we'll see signs, wonders, and miracles. That's the reason I contend for the old time way. That's the reason I contend for shouting and singing and praising God. And running aisles. And preaching. The Holy Ghost has revealed to us. That there's a miracle here tonight. I mean that was before church. That's not since all we've had. I told my wife before church. There will be a miracle in church tonight. Something great's going to happen. Because Jesus is revealed. The wonder worker is revealed. The roof has been opened up. The cloud is gone. From this conference forth, I shall do wonder signs and miracles in my church and through my ministry. And I will exalt them. Ministers, you're going to be used like you've never been used in your life. Saints, you're going to see miracles, signs, and wonders like you had never thought. We have entered a new day. From this comfort forth, Brother Urshan, you're going to hear things you thought you would have never heard. Who wants healing tonight? Everybody that wants healing, I want you to stand. We do not have enough ministers to go through this auditorium. But signs follow believers, not just preachers. You're not to go around with a bottle of oil, but you're supposed to go around with a handful of honey. If you are sitting by somebody that needs healing, I commission you in the name of Jesus to lay hands on them that they may be healed. Do it in Jesus' name now. Be thy healed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Cast that sickness in the Jesus name fire. Hallelujah. (laughs) 
It's fixing to happen. Hey, it's fixing to happen. Everybody clap your hands and worship him now. Worship him. Worship him. All right. Some time ago, we was in an apostolic service. Not in our particular church, but another. I'm I'm fixing to close. I meant to preach two hours, but I'm only going to preach an hour. And in this service, the, the, the church was bound. They needed a breakthrough. It had been some time since somebody got the Holy Ghost. In Jesus. Please understand it's only in Jesus. Hallelujah. Some, uh, God's doing something for your daughter. Right now. There's a miracle taking place. Brother Saban, it's happening right now. And the pastor was so desperate for it, Brother Kilgore. You'd know the name if I call it, but I'm not. So we got up in Jesus and declared God was fixing to work a miracle in a work. From the front door of the church came a light. It came up to the pulpit and it crossed this way. And as soon as it did, two people got the Holy Ghost. Hey! time religion ain't dead it may be dead in your part of the country but it ain't in mine I believe there's still just as much power just as much glory just as much grace just as much of God now as it ever was in fact I declare unto you by the spirit that the church is in better shape today than it was in the New Testament. You know why I believe that? I hadn't been eating buzzard. And the Bible says, don't eat buzzard. You know why? Because you take on the nature of the buzzard. There can be all kinds of miracle signs and wonders going on. And green pastors and missionary endeavors taking the world and all you see and want to feed on is rot. You've been eating buzzard. And it also says don't eat owl. You know why? Owls hoot out of their throat. The Lord don't want anything just coming from the throat. Brother Urshan, your old dad taught me that when he preached for me. He says, Brother Creel, I want you to say it from way down here. Hallelujah. You ain't said it right, Brother Creel. And I thought I was a real worshiper. Brother S.G. Nars told me at the camp meeting through Brother Weeks that Brother Creel's going to be one of the four beasts. He's Mr. Worship. I'd rather be Mr. Worship than Mr. Buzzard. (laughs) 
Oh, Brother Andrew Orson said, Brother Creel, get away down here. Hallelujah. That's good. Don't say, Hallelujah. And don't sing that way either. Because that's not worship, that's squealing. You need owl. Now to do that, Brother Urshan, do you remember how he said do it? Would you mind just for me doing it? <laughs> Hallelujah! Now, I want to see if you can do it. Way down here now. Come on. Hold. You can do it better now. Come on. Hey, you know what that means? I found out, I just came back from Europe here just a few days ago. And I found out in Europe, and I didn't know this. I thought hallelujah was the only universal language word understood. But to my surprise, it's not. Everywhere I went, it was Coca-Cola. I said, what is this, God? He said, it's like hallelujah. It's the real thing. <laughs> Woo! Let me tell you something. Hallelujah means I give myself to thee. And that's the real thing. That's the real thing. I said, that's the real thing. This is real. This is not make believe. This is God. This is real apostolic revival. This is a return. Okay, Brother Urshan, you went all over my sermon too last night. The prodigal son, down in that mire, he said, I will return. Where to? My old home place. And God told me my old home place was where there was real worship and food. I'm tired of this filth. I'm tired of this mire. I'm tired of this beat in this hog pen. I want to get back where they sing, give me that old time religion. Brother Merle Ewan, Brother Merle Ewan, Sister Joan, please come. Help your neighboring pastor. I need you bad. Brother Merle, you know that old song you sing that's got ever old song that you can nearly think of? I want you to sing it. Get up here and sing it. And just before he starts, Brother O.C. Thompson used to teach us, there's a home note. Listen, you can go to re, me, re, fa, fi. But there's a home note. And you know what it's shaped like? Like a teepee. 
We better get back in the teepees. I'm going to be honest with you. You can have this REA. Give me the WPA. And I say this in the spirit. And I'm not a politician. There is a certain party that is leaning in an antichrist spirit. And it's called Democrat. some sense I know what territory I'm standing on I'm standing on Reagan territory but I preach the same gospel everywhere I go brother Lumpkin if you Democrat shame on you he said he wasn't And where two or three agree together, it shall be. Come on, Brother Merle, before I meddle. (laughs) I believe it's time for the church to declare its stand. If it hurt up the devil. Okay, Brother Merle. There was a time on earth when in the book of heaven an old account was standing for sins that unforgiven. My name was at the top and many things below. But I went unto the keeper and I sat long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago, and my record's clear today, for he washed my sins away, and the old account was settled long ago. When at the judgment bar, I'm going to stand before the king, and he, the this book This is God's open, dancing center. But he cannot find the faith. Everybody thing. worship God. And will my heart be glad, while tears of joy will flow, because I had it settled, and I settled it long ago, long ago.
I believe with all of my heart that the Holy Ghost has talked to us tonight. We're going to do one more ridiculous thing before we leave here. I want to leave with total victory. In the third chapter of Genesis and the 15th verse, it talks about the heel of the seed of the woman bruising the head of the seed of the serpent. I want to show you what power you got and we're going to we're going to get total victory and then you can go. You ready? All right, the heel of the seed of the woman. The Bible said that Christ is the head, the church is the body. Where's the heel? Where's the heel? In the body or the head? Where is it in the body? The lowest thing of your body. The very lowest thing in the body of Christ is more powerful than the head, the greatest thing that the devil has to offer. Now what I want you to do, and then when you get through doing this, as far as I'm concerned, you're dismissed. Now all these people that's going and rushing out of here to get them a hamburger, they're going to miss this. All right, I want you to become children with me now. And whatever problem you think you got, I want you to reach out and just grab a hold of it just like this, would you? Come on. You got it? Now remember the heel is in the body. That problem that's bugging you has given you a bad time. But you're fixing to get victory over it now. I want you, when I tell you, now just hang on to it. But when I tell you to, I want you to fling that on the floor. And then I want you to put your heel on it and just grind it in that cement. You got your heel on his head. Now, now remember this. If you get your heel on his head, all he can do is wag his tail. Now, rattlesnakes has got rattlers in their tail, but they can't hurt you with the rattlers. Long as you got your foot on his head. You ready? In the name of Jesus, I want you to fling that problem on the floor and put your heel on it. In the name of Jesus, total victory.
Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings unto the remission of sins, for salvation to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then, walk in the new life, study and grow, become a servant of righteousness, keep self pure, be an example, have faith in God, follow Jesus, put first things first, resist temptation, be faithful, and be fruitful.